gosh. I had tons of traffic and just got back from being on Fox News. So spur of the moment thing here today. They called me because the market, as you know, fell today, if you follow the market. Um, and we are falling here after hours. So I appreciate everyone staying and I'm offering a trading room trial and an open house Thursday and Friday, tomorrow and Friday for everybody that came. So you're all, luckily you stayed and it's worth your while. Very good. Hello there, Leo. And thanks so much to Kathy. Thank you so much, Kathy, for holding down the fort for me. So welcome everyone. Today's lecture is gonna be just full on charts where I'm gonna talk about momentum and how you can make money trading momentum, okay? So if you have any questions, you can just plop it in the room. And for those of you that don't know me, I own my own company called The Stock Swoosh, and I, and I train and teach this specific method that we're gonna talk about tonight based on stocks gapping. So I'm just looking for gaps, and I'm gonna go over here and explain to you what a gap is, okay? And then I'm gonna to explain to you why trading gaps is very profitable because you're trading momentum. And this is actually a good evening to discuss this because the market right now, as we are looking at it here, is gapping down in live, live time. And you know, one of the things that I think traders struggle with, and if you've been at this for a while, you, you know exactly what, uh, what I mean here, you tend to jump around from different things to things to things. Like people will jump and jump and jump. They'll do this strategy and that strategy and this one and that one. They'll do all kinds of things, Forex, futures, stocks, and they'll do different mixed up strategies and all of those things. I'm telling you right now that one of the reasons for my success and continued success is because I just focus on one strategy, okay? And I tend to like to focus on one stock pick a day as well, okay? So I think that when you get really, really good at one thing, that helps to ensure your success because it's never about being a jack of all trades. It really is about being a master of one thing and I have done that with gaps. So let's talk about exactly what a gap is since we're watching the market here in live time. And actually, if if anybody, Galahad, I see that you're in here. If there's any earnings out tonight, we can look at some stocks picked specifically. But I think the market is, is a good gap to look at here. But if there's any earnings out that you want me to look at for stock picks, <coughs> excuse me, I can pull them up too. Koala Bear, I see you too. If you know of any earnings right now, I'll look them up. But let's look at the market. So what happened here today? I'm going to just go to this chart down here. This is a five-minute chart. Market closed at 290.46. So this was the close of the SPY, the SPY's ETF for the S&P. Where are we right now in live time? I'm gonna blow this up. This is a 15 minute chart. Right now it's 5.17 Eastern time. 5.15 here was the last bar. You see that we're here around 2.90.15, 2.90.20. So the SPY, is moving in the after hours here because the market closed, closed at four o'clock Eastern time, and we're down. So we're down about 25 cents and change, 25, 30 cents, okay, from where we closed. So this is a gap. What it means is that the market is falling after hours. So we're gapping down. Now, I don't know exactly if we open at this point tomorrow, if we open lower, if we open higher, it's way too far away. But a gap is a difference between the close and the open. So right now, live time here in the market, we're gapping down. And we did gap up today. So we closed the night before. And actually, let me blow this up too. We closed yesterday. After we fell and we sold off all day, we closed at 290.76 in the SPY and boom. We opened higher this morning and we opened at 291.75. So we opened at 291.75, tried to rally, couldn't do it, broke, and now fell into the close and we're falling now tonight. So what do I look for every day when I'm, when I'm looking for something to trade, whether long or short, I'm looking for stocks that are gapping. This, this is an ETF of the market. We, can, we sometimes trade the market, but this is just an example here of the gap, okay? So you can see that there was momentum in the market yesterday. By momentum, I mean is a big fat bar. High here was 293.73, low is 290.64. A big fat bar in the market, which makes for what? Good momentum, good playthrough. If you shorted the market yesterday, you made money. 
And guess what? We're getting some momentum here tonight and some follow through from the selling that happened into the close. So I'm gonna take this off here just to show you uh, this, I'm just getting this off, how we sold off here today into the close. Like we actually ran out of day. This is a 15 minute chart of the market here into the open and we just went boom, 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 boom. And we really just ran out of time here into the close in for the market or we would have been we would have been down here see this is where we are right now see i took that off but this is where we are see we're, we're here we're like hovering okay anyways this is one example i'm talking about yesterday in the market where if you had bought a put or if you had shorted the market you would have made money because you had momentum and the market gap down and you had a big fat bar, which is red, signifying what? Signifying selling. So you can make money shorting gaps and you can make money going long gaps. Now let's look at something that would be a good long or it was a good long here. BYND. This is the Beyond Meat everyone's been talking about. This is a new issue. This came out here, 5-2. This is barely out for two months, basically. This was a nice long where the momentum was to the upside. See this here. So the stock gapped up from this day on 6.6 to the next day on 6.7. The stock closed the day before here at 99.50 and boom, open in the morning at 1.30. So the stock gapped up $30 from the previous day's close up. And then on top of that, it rallied almost 15 points high in the day was 149.46 and then it followed through into another gap on monday the next day and guess what high on this day was 186.43 so from two days from the friday to the monday the stock went from literally an open of 130 all the way up to 186 and change shows 56 points this people is the power of momentum and the power of the gap so the gap moved the stock higher here and then took it further and beyond and through and here is the move okay so this in this case was a long this was a bullish gap and this was a bullish gap and again you could have bought the stock as a day trade or you would have bought calls okay now this here had a really nice move here today as well because it looks like it's about to pop any second this was a gap up too in bynd stock closed here yesterday gapped up this morning rallied is green low in the day was 153 and high in the day today in the bynd was what 162.25 so you see the momentum in this from yesterday till today here's the momentum that was back here again 67 to 610 this was friday this was monday so all these other days in here even though there's stuff to do stuff that you could have done stuff to do whatever these were the big days to make money do you see so again if you can focus 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 on stocks on days that have big moves and momentum that's how you profit and kathy had put in the email all the trades i called in this bynd actually since last week there was a trade on this on monday and two trades today so this has had quite a few trades um or from friday to monday this has had quite a few trades and it just since three trades since that that email went out this stock has had a lot of momentum moves and we've captured literally every one of them since that since that earnings and most were calls and one was a put now galahad is putting in here what's going on right now i will look at it full let's look at that uh full is down you are right so this is a live gap that's happening here. Now this is, well this has, this has volume here normally. Here we go. So where to be close today in full? This is a live gap, Galahad just looked it up. 44.94, where are we at right now? You can take it over here and see we're at 42. So the stock is gapping down about three bucks, okay? low volume in this but it looks like it will trade out it does have volume normally we'll see where this is at tomorrow morning so this could be down more this could be down not as much but this is probably going to open down i doubt this would flip around and end up gapping up this looks like it is probably going to open down 
and this is full. So again, every morning what I do, my process is I get up in the morning, or you can do it at night. And we're looking at these at night, but I tend to wait until the morning because I like to be fresh and wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and have a good night's sleep and give myself a break from looking at charts from one point of the day to the next. And I usually wait to the morning to rate gaps, but depending on where you are in the world, your time zone, you may want to rate the gaps at night. Like you could go through and rate these gaps tonight. So full is one that's definitely gapping down. This is on my watch list for tomorrow. And so will the spy because it's down. And Galahad's mentioning MLHR. Let's take a look at this. This is good because these are live gaps. Now look at this one. This is up. So it looks like this close here at 37.85. This is gapping up to 42.20. Let's blow this up here and see it. This is really getting flying. Wow. This is up a lot. Look at this chart. MLHR. I'm thinking that this is earnings as well, Galahad. Is this earnings or what? Wow, this is flying as we speak. This isn't even done. So this is a, a bullish gap. They're both earnings. Okay, now we know. Full was earnings and MLHR was earnings. Okay, so this was earnings too. So this is up. So again, let's get back to this discussion I was having earlier, and I'm going to bring up another chart here for you to look at. But the, the idea of momentum is very, very important to make money trading. And so one of the reasons, a lot of people trade these things called low float stocks or penny stocks or really, really cheap stocks. I don't touch those with a 10 foot pole. One, they don't have a lot of volume. Two, they're way too spready and risky to trade because you have to take so much size in order to make substantial money in them. And three, they don't have the play on through. Now, what do I mean? I mean big, big, big moves. I mean momentum where you take something and you can go a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. You can have a hundred percent turnaround risk to reward in like five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, ten minutes. That's the kind of thing that I am looking for when I am trading. The possibility of that, the setup for that. Because if you have to wait around to get a big move in something and trade in something all day for an hour, two hours, three hours, all day from 9.30 to 4, it's very difficult, very, very difficult to consistently profit because you will be at the whims and mercy of the market. If the market moves or falls or somebody tweets or there's econ out or a Fed minutes at 2 o'clock, your train can be affected by that. So I tend to want to focus on the morning. I'm looking for the momentum to come into the stock early in the morning between 9.30 and 10, and I'm looking for only stocks that are gapping. And I'm telling you, when you're looking for real stocks that you would know of the companies, like the CCL, this is Carnival Cruises, everybody knows Carnival. Everybody's heard of Carnival Cruises, seen the commercials, they're right outside. I can look outside my window and see the Carnival Cruise ships. When I'm looking for stocks to trade, they're companies that you know. And most importantly, and the most important thing is, they're companies that are traded by institutions. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a look at, no, let's look at, let's stay with CCL. So I'm gonna blow this up. Let me just go back here. This is CCL back from beginning of January. So this is pretty much end December, January through today. So six months of the year 2019, this is CCL, okay? So I had called a put in this and we had also did a short in this for the day trade, okay? But CCL is and has been traded by institutions. Now, what do I mean by institutions? Big banks, big professional traders, hedge funds, they take positions in stocks. They will buy stocks and they will sell stocks and they will also short stocks. So when institutional money is moving and controlling a stock in the process of the gap and in the, in the volatility momentum on the live day, guess what? You get big moves. Now, the thing is that you have to get it in the right direction because if you don't get in the right direction, you're gonna lose money. But you always have to get something in the right direction to make money. It doesn't matter if you take a trade in something that moves 25 cents on the day, or you take a trade in something that moves two and a half dollars on the day. Anything that you would trade, you have to get it in the right direction to make money or you'll lose anyways. So why not look and find things that had big moves without you having to take 50,000 shares of them, even though you may not even be able to do that if it's something like a cheap penny stock. But I mean, ultimately, that's, 
that's why those things are just so, so risky, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to this day in here. This was 620, and I'm going to show you what we did on this this day. Actually, let me show you the daily first. So here's the daily chart of CCL. Stock closed the night before at 52.84, boom, open in the morning. Open at 47.20, CCL closed here, open here. What is that? It's a gap down. So I got up in the morning and I rated the gap per my golden gap rating system. That is a class that I teach once a month. It's 59.99 at six grand. Next class is July 13th and 14th if you want to sign up. But this here is what I do and I look for it and I rate it per my 26 point rating system to short it or I rate it and then I say, wait a minute, this isn't a short. I'm not going to short this or I'm going to do something else. Now let's go here to the 20th. This is a one minute chart. So one of the other things that I do, and you learn this from me, and if you decide to be in the trading room Thursday and Friday, you'll see this too. I call the live trades in the trading room, a live time, the entry and the stop and the exit. And you follow me if you wanna do it. The trading room is an open house, like I said, the next two days, but you must take the class to join the trading room and that is very important to be effective because people have to know what they're doing to take these trades because they set up very fast and very quickly. And you'll see what I mean by this CCL. Gosh, this is taking a while here. Let's go, let's go down 20th. Okay. So here is what we did. So this is 9.30. Again, actually, let me move this over. Here's the gap. You can see it. So the stock closed here the night before at 4 o'clock. Boom. Open in the morning. So this bar here is 4. This bar here is 930. And just like that, it's gapping. Okay? So anyways, we shorted this, and we got the drop. Boom. So do you see this in here? Shoot. Down. This is not quite a dollar, but almost. You take it. Boom. Short it. Boom. Take it. Get out. Boom, boom. So this is what I look to do all the time. This is momentum. And also the nice thing about momentum, I will tell you this as well, is most of the trades that we do, not all, some we have to wait. Some we have to wait for them to go. But most of the trades that we do go right away. You take it and you're up immediately and boom, it goes. And that's what we're looking for. And that again is part of the consistency because I'm looking for that over and over and over and over and over again. I don't need to stay in a trade forever. And one of the things I find very, very interesting, very interesting, and I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the market for this actually. There's there's some type of I don't know philosophy out there or whatever you want to call it, the mental state. It really is where people decide that they want to trade the market. And yet they have this attitude, this attitude that is like an investor attitude, this buy and hold or even short and hold attitude. This market has been very volatile to me. That's how I'm reading it. Now, many people may say, oh, this is beautiful. It's fabulous. No, this has been volatile. And I'm going to explain to you in a minute why. But the fact is it has been. And so if you are a buy and hold kind of person or even a short and hold kind of person, you're having a difficult time trading actively, I'd say in the last two to three years. Now, while that might have worked the buy and hold from January to April 30th, it is not going to work the rest of 2019 and pretty much didn't work in 2018 and didn't work in 2017 and didn't work in 2016. If you want to make money in the market, this take it and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it forever it does not work. The idea of trading, active, active trading is you have one objective. Your objective is to go in, to take the setup, to take the trade, whether you're going long and short, to get in and get out, to get in and get out. That doesn't mean you have to get out of every trade in five minutes like CCL. Although if you're day trading, you do have to get out before four o'clock. So we do look for those quick moves for the day trades. But for the options trades, you still want to take them and you want to take them and get out. You want to get the momentum into them before you get out. You want to get the move in them before you get out, but you still don't want to hold them forever. You still don't want to hold them forever. So a lot of traders, I think, they say them traders, they call themselves traders, and some of you here might be in this category, so don't be offended, but they're really like in this mentality of this holding, 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 okay? How are you going to make money? You chunk it out 
you chunk it, you chunk it, you chunk it, you chunk it and chunk it. And people want to make a lot. I know people want to make a lot of, a lot of money. They want to make a lot. They want to make $1,000 a day. They want to make 200 grand a year. They want to make this thing, that thing, whatever. You make a lot of money by being on point, looking for something and focusing in on that thing and doing it and going into it with the conviction and taking it, boom, and hitting it and just going into it like that. It does not mean that every single solitary trade that you take works, but it does mean that you're full on into it when you take it with 100% conviction and you boom, and you go and you hit it and you do it and you let the money ride and poof, and you get it and you're out. Now, I'm going to go over with you the trade that we did today, which was a really nice trade and actually really encompassed what I just described with words, but we did it in this mew. Mew was a bullish gap, but not necessarily out of the gate that I was crazy about. And then I saw it, and I saw it the way that it was acting, and I saw that this was holding and being bought. And you can see here how this closed as a nice big fat bar today, okay? In fact, not that far off the high, less than 60 cents off the high. High was 37.61. Close in this today was 37.05, okay? So what did we do in the Mew? I blow this up. Mew was a long. Mew was a bullish gap. We're talking about momentum. We're talking about taking it, letting it go, and then get the move and take it, okay? So anyways, here was the Mew. Now you could have taken this Mew, actually, you could have taken this Mew early in here. We didn't, we didn't get this exactly early, okay? Anyways, we got this a little bit later. We, but we did get this at a decent price. So here was the Mew setting up. You could have got it in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. Pretty much everyone was in by the 80s. And then I, and then it was setting up again. I said, take a little bit more, take a little bit more. And it pushed, 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 got up close here, 37.11. But I felt really certain that this would either go back to this number for certain or push over it and then really have a much bigger move. And that is exactly what it did. And then here it is. Here's the move. Do you see this? Like, so this is, so you want to be in before this happens because you want to get it. You don't want to be chasing it, chasing it, chasing it, chasing it. You want to be right on top of this thing, boom, and getting it. And again, we got in this late, but the fact is that we got the move in this. Okay, here's the move. Doom. So this was, I mean, this was basically, depending on where you got filled and depending on where you get out, almost, almost a dollar. I mean, it was close enough. And then with the ad, this was a really, really, really nice trade. 37.50 was a real target. There was a possibility 38 could have happened. That was a dream target for this. It didn't quite make it, but it definitely had a nice, nice move and there it was. So again, this is momentum, momentum to the upside stock open and you had the momentum in it, okay? So as an active trader, your job is to be consistent. Your job is to consistently book money. It doesn't mean that every trade that you take works, but it means that you have to be consistently booking, 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 booking money. And if you're holding trades overnight, then you need to have, again, conviction that the momentum's gonna follow through overnight, but I still wouldn't hold it long overnight. I still would not hold things long overnight right now because this market and the environment that we live in provides huge opportunity for active traders to make money. I mean, can you ever remember a time when the president of the United States can, can tweet something and actually move the entire market? Because that is the environment that we're living in right now. Now, you can look at that in one of two ways. You could say that's bad or you could say that's good. Either way you look at it, the fact is it allows for huge moves to happen in a market which you can play and make money whether it's overnight that you're already in a trade or whether it's on the live live day if you understand how to read the move and what's going to happen and today is a good example as well because in the morning they came out and news came out that made the market gap up this morning because we gapped up i know we're red right now when you look at this chart but we rallied in the morning the market gapped up in the pre-market and rallied. I didn't call this as a long today because I said, well, this will be interesting to see what happens. But we didn't hold the rally. We didn't hold the rally today in the live day. We didn't hold the rally. We didn't hold the gap up. We're down tonight because, again, I don't trade fundamentals. I don't trade that anyways. So somebody could go out and say so-and-so and so-and-so 
It doesn't matter to me. I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. And these are important times to be doing that because you must look at the price action because if you're going by every fundamental, how do you even know? Companies are changing what they're doing because of the tariffs. Tweets are coming out all the time. The information could be real. Something could happen that's fake news. How do you know? Well, I'll tell you what you know. You know right now that if you pulled up your charts, if you're an active trader right now, you can pull it right up. You can see that the SPY is trading between the bid and the ask of 290.15 and 290.18. And that we can not disagree upon. That is fact. So the reality is that when you're focused and you want to make money, you have to focus on things that you know that you can sink your teeth into. And that is, for me, gaps. It is focus on one thing or two at the most. It is the concept and the idea that you must be booking money over and over and over and over again. And I'm at the point where I don't even have a problem doing something in the same chart, because I want to go back to the BYND. We did do one put in this and it worked. I called it Friday and it dropped on a Monday. And then again today I call this long. So the fact is that I have no problem. And this is a really interesting stock to trade if you've never traded it so far, if you haven't. Talk about momentum. This stock can move. I mean, if you have not day traded this or you have not done an option in this, I have never, never, and I can't even tell you, I don't even know of a stock that I've ever seen that can have moves like this. This is a great stock to trade to make active money if you get it right. But by golly, you better get it right because there are people today that shorted this stock and the, this was not a short. It felt today, and I, in fact, I said it in the room, I'm like, oh, day traders are shorting this. Can you believe it? But it was a long, it was a long, it is a long, and I won't be surprised if this gaps up tomorrow and pops, and I don't even, this doesn't even matter with the market. So I called actually two calls in this, and this is through them both for the strike. But either way, this market, you've got to take trades and book it and take trades and book it, and you play momentum, you are allowed to do that. When you're in stuff that's not moving, people tend to want to hold it because they want to make more, they want to make more, they want to make more, and then they get killed. So they, then they're never up a lot, then they never book the money that they're up, then they're only in a little, and they're only up a little, and they say they didn't get out because they're only up a little, but it's because they're trading stuff that doesn't have momentum, and this is a good example of something that does have momentum, and so does the market. So does the market right now. So does the market. Any questions here before I say the next thought? Any questions at all? Now I'm gonna talk about here this market and I didn't I I didn't get a chance to say this on TV. I wanted to. Hopefully I'll get to say this sometime in the next week as well. Is everyone here? Is everyone listening to me? Because I'm just I've been talking straight since I came in like for the last 30 minutes nonstop. Any questions here before I say the next thing? Falling asleep because she's been waiting for me for 45 minutes. I want to know that I'm talking to live human beings. Kathy's not asleep. Good. I know, but no one's talking. Koala Bear's awake. He's alive. Galahad's all ears. Okay. Pierre is alive too. <laughs> I literally walked in the house, put the tele, put the television on, put the, put the, uh, put this on. I haven't even had a glass of water. I'm gonna take a sip of water here. I'm like, <laughs> and before I, before I, before I forget, and make my market point. Um, the next class, for those of you that are interested, is July 13th and 14th. I think I said that before, but it's July 13th and 14th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, okay? And I am doing the open house Thursday and Friday. If you want to come, email me for that information at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Kathy, if you can put my email in. Anyways, long story short, I didn't get to say this on TV, but the market, <clears throat> if, what's happened in the market? I'm going to quiz you. Actually, instead of me just telling you, what's happened in the last two weeks? What's happened in the last mm, three weeks? There. If you had to go on Fox News tonight and they said, what happened, Melissa? They said, what happened? Boom, boom. What would you say on Fox News? 
Describe the market in the last three weeks. 30 seconds or less. Galahad saying gap ups. Okay, what else? What else though? <clears throat> Galahad saying more green than red. What else? I'm not saying I agree with him. I'm just telling you what Galahad's saying. Over last high in the SPY, yes, we did make new highs in the SPY here in this state, which was 620. What else? Nobody's saying anything I've said. Leo's saying up and down. I would agree with that statement of Leo's. Anybody else? They said you had to go on TV right now and give your analysis of this market. What would you say? Would you say nothing? You'd say, I don't, I don't know what to think. I have no idea. Come on, you got to know. Galad saying strong. All right, let's look at it. So my take on this is interesting. So yes, we've been strong. Yes, we did rally. Yes, we had different gaps. Some were up, some were down. That's true. But nobody said anything that I can't even believe that nobody said. And Galahad too. Nobody said the very most noticeable thing. Although I did say in the trading room this morning, Koala Bear was there, so he probably would know this if I said it. Nobody said, though, the thing that seems very, 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 very obvious to me. And again, I'm just looking at the month of June. Anybody else want to take a guess before I just tell you? I can't believe that no one's noticing it. There's no big, fat, green bars. For a market that is supposedly rallying and supposedly moving higher, which it which it theoretically has. Now again, we're low, we're low, we were lowered yesterday and we were lower today, and we're probably lower tomorrow. Whether we're lower in the live day or just lower in the gap in the open, I don't know until I see the open. But for for a market that has rallied and the spy made new highs, the Q's didn't, the diamonds didn't. We have, we have no fat green bars. There's green bars, but they're not fat ones. They don't look like the fatties. They don't look like this. They don't look like Adobe bars. Now, I'm going to take this away because I'm trying to make a point. I'm not talking about what Adobe did here. I'm talking about this. This was last week, and actually I called a call in this. What what th this you're like woo look at that and that is very obvious do you see that the market doesn't look like that and we don't have any bars that look like that the whole last month are you with me so again actually before i get off this adobe this is a great example of momentum and we we got we got this and gal had actually held this I, this was a good move here this costs pennies. This option costs pennies, pennies. And it ended up being a huge trade if you held it. It was a nice trade here. This was John Mungo. That was another nice really call. But again, look, don't hold it long. Take it here and get out. Take it here and get out. Take it and get out. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. See what would have happened if you would have held this. You, would, you have to get out. You're up a lot of money these days. But anyways, you see? Don't hold anything in this market too long. Look what this did. This didn't lose all the move, but it almost did. Look at that. I haven't looked at this since yesterday. So another great example here of momentum, playing it right, and then taking the money and running to the bank. And it was getting back to what I was saying about the SPY. Oh, we're down even more. We're going to break 290 here as we're talking tonight. We'll break 290 here tonight. And it was back to what I was saying Galahad, are you listening to me? No big fatties. No big fatties at all. So you say, okay, now just listen to me. I say, well, okay, if institutions move stocks in the market, which they do, 
institutions move stocks and the market, which they do. You say, okay, well, where are they? Gosh, I gotta put my glasses on and I still don't see them with my glasses. Where are they? I just, you squint in your, I don't see them. I don't see them. Do you understand? Now, that's not the reason that I'm saying any of the things that I'm saying overall in general, because I believe the market is still strong and in an uptrend. But I haven't called any recent calls here in this market for the very reason that I don't see institutions in here full on. Because if I did, guess what? We'd see some fatties, that we'd see some Adobe bars, and they're not there. You know what I'm saying? Are you with me? Are you with me? So my whole point of tonight is trading momentum can be very profitable. You only need one momentum move a day to make money. You have to get in the right direction, but that's obvious anyways, no matter how you trade, end of story, period. And it is better to trade stocks that are moved by institutions. And then it's very obvious. And it's very clear, like the Adobe bars here where this was a beautiful long last week that was on earnings and it gapped up and it moved. And the mew that happened today. So when you have big moves in stocks, that's how you have the opportunity to make money. And by the way, look at this volume. Wow, look at this volume. Actually, this is right now here too, moving. But look at that volume on this today. Wow. Do you see that, people? Wowie. I'm gonna look at that BYND volume now that I'm talking about this here. That's pretty good too, not as good as Mew. Um, okay, so does everyone understand the point I'm trying to make? So I look for gaps, I'm looking for momentum, I'm focused on one thing. That's how you're consistently profitable. It doesn't mean every trade works, but that's why we use stops. With the options, I don't have any stops. Basically, what your risk is the stop. Now, some people kill the trades if they're down at 50%, but know that if you do that, they may still move and go and be profitable, and then you would have missed it. So that's really on you. I tell people to hold through the options, keep them at the same risk, and let them play out. But you could you kill them at 50% if you want to. That's totally, totally your own independent decision. But either way... We've been doing longs and shorts this year in both the day trades and options. And I'm really very, very focused on the moves and getting the fast moves. Whether they're the options or whether they're the day trades, I'm focused on the fast moves. That fast move could be a couple of minutes. That fast move could be one day. The fast move might be 48 hours, but fast is fast. And in this type of environment, and I, I'm telling you, you've got to book your profits. You can never lose money when you're booking profits. Never, 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 never. And there were people that got out of mute today at 37, at 36.90. They didn't get the move over the high to 36, uh, 37.60. They did not. That's They didn't, but they still had a good trade, and they still had a, a move, and they had profit. So you can't fault anyone for taking profits in this market at any point in time when you're up. You can lose money, though. And it's very frustrating. It's debilitating to your confidence when you lose money when you were up. In fact, losing money and then just never being up obviously is bad. But when you lose money in a trade you were up, that's really bad. I mean, that's like, you know, really, really, really bad. And I'm sure there's people here that have done that. So don't do that to yourself. Okay? Any questions from anyone about anything at all? I think it was good to do a chart lecture tonight. I rarely do them, and I need to do more of them. They're interesting, and you can learn a lot uh, from the process and how I'm thinking things through. But if you want to learn my system, you definitely have to sign up for the class, and it is well, well worth it. Some of you have been following me in here for a long time. I don't know if some of you will ever do the class. You've been following me, really, for like seven years, some of you. I hope that some of you do do the class before I ever stop teaching it. People have been making a lot of money with me this year. And uh, I think that says a lot. There are some people that are super, super duper good 
uh, that I've been working with at Booking Money. I mean, there I have some people that are trading that have never traded in their life before, and they just get out when they're out, and they're, they're successful because they just don't even worry about targets. They don't even look at the market, quite frankly, at all. And when they're up, they get out. When they're up, they get out. When they're up, they get out. <laughs> you know? It's interesting. People that have a non-trading background really tend to do extremely well with me because I'm calling a lot of profitable trades and they just get out when they're up. And they really just, if they're not up, they really just let the trades on and just see what happens, really. And I think that's a good philosophy overall. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? So Kathy has the information in there for the live trading room for the open house for Thursday and Friday. I don't know what we're going to do. I, I mean, I've seen these things here and I'm aware of these things and we'll see. I may do something different. I may look at these things. You know, I'm going to just kind of play it by ear. But I will tell you that we're going to break 290 here in the SPY tonight before we close. It's only 554 and this is a... A, 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 this is going to be a nice move here. Galahad, are you in any of the market puts or did you pretty much just not do any of them? So I called puts in the market and I think people didn't believe the market would fall and probably didn't do them. Any questions from anyone? Oh, you know what? I want to look at Disney. Disney's holding its own here. Yep, Galahad, I thought you probably didn't do the puts. Galahad's not in them. Wow, I called a nice put in Google too. Galahad, you didn't do this either, huh? Wow. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Any questions about the class? Any questions about training? Any questions about gaps? Oh, Galahad, you did do Google? Okay, very good then. Oh, all right, then you did it. If you didn't got out, there's nothing wrong with that. That's that means you did it. Pierre has a question. And anyone else? Kathy's got my information in there. You can email me at Melissa at the stockswoosh.com. If you have questions about the class or if you want to come to the open house usually only one but some days I will do two if we're talking about day trades at the same time options it's I mean I don't have a I don't have a minimum I don't have a maximum day trades go fast and it's a lot to watch at one time I prefer to do one trade a day in a day trade but sometimes I might be in two things at a time. But I would say 95% of the time, I'm only in one thing at a time. But we might do two things on the day. But I mean, most of the time, I'm in one thing at a time as a day trade, and that's it for the focus. Now, as far as options, that's a different story. I might call five option trades in one day, and then, I, then they're all on. And they may or may not go that day, they may go the next day. So that's a different story. But those are longer trades. Active day trades, we're in and out quickly and we have to watch what's happening. And I prefer to focus. Holding time for what? I was just saying about CCL. We like to be in and out, quickly and quickly. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour at the most. I like to trade between 9, 30, and 10, in, out, in, out, in, out. Not long for holding for day trades at all. Options, it's whenever the move happens. So if the move could happen on the day that I call it, the move could take 24 to 48 hours. I'll hold it as long as I need to to get the move. And the BYNDs, I called trades here that you could have got out of this day. If you held them, you got a bigger move. Then I called trades here. The best thing was to get out of them all that day, except for the last one, which didn't work. But actually, the last one was profitable if you got out, too. If you got out of everything this day, they were all profitable. But anyways, long story short, this was such a big move, you had to get out of 90% of the trades. Anyways, then I called some more here. Then it gapped up so ridiculously, 30 points plus. Again, you had to get out because you're up so much. I mean, this is like a no-brainer. These are no-brainers. 
You're up a lot, poop out, up a lot, poop out, up a lot, poop out. And this here was good. And then it had to move into the next day. So these are all like, take it, get out, take it, get out the next day. But it's not always this way. Sometimes it takes a day or two. It's whenever the move happens. But it, the move is usually, poop, it's right there. It's in your face. Like there is the move. You're up, get out. The Gap Options newsletter, you receive the trades. You must manage those exits on your own. You manage your risk yourself and you manage the options trades exits yourself. The exits for the day trades, I call in the live room. I don't have a live option trading room 24 seven. No, I'd have no life and people have to decide their own things. Like I said, Adobe, I thought this was just a nice easy peasy move here. So Galahad ended up holding it. He got almost the whole thing. So in this case here, if you held it, you made out, but that's not always the case. So people have to decide on their own because it's really up to you. If you're in a trade and you risk $500 and you're up 500 bucks, that's good profit. I'd say look for 50% to 100% profit, but at the same point, you there's many trades that do fall through the secondary move in the day and then if you're up $500 here and you hold it here, well, you could make 2,500. So you, you gotta decide that. And if you're in your head about it a little bit, then I say take half out, hold half if you want to. This is more of a personality thing. So that's why I don't send out anything about the exits. You decide how much you wanna risk. You decide if you wanna kill it at 50% loss or hold the whole thing. You decide if you wanna get out when you're at 50% or 100% or hold it to a bigger move. You have to decide, and a lot of that has to do with your personality. But I think that it's very obvious if you've ever traded an option before, you know when you're seeing an option chain, when it starts to get that rhythm in it and it's moving, and you know when it feels flat and it's dead. You can tell when it's flat and it's dead, well, you wouldn't get out then. You wanna get that, that motion in it. I don't know if you know what I mean, but if you've ever traded an option, you know what I mean. And if you've ever traded this stock, you know what I mean. Okay. Um, what else? I guess that's it. Listen, thanks for staying, everyone. I'm sorry that I'm late. The clip of Fox will be on my YouTube. If you're not subscribed to YouTube, go to YouTube and subscribe. I talked about markets in China. Maybe some of you saw me on Fox, hopefully you did. Thank you for staying later. If you wanna to come to the open house, email me. I hope some of you eventually do the class. I've had people that have been following me for years that are finally joining and they are kicking themselves in the butt for not joining earlier. I guess it takes people time to finally be convinced that something works. I, I fully realize that there are systems out there that don't work, but in the same vein, there are systems out there that do work and mine is one of them. So. You know, I've been doing this a long time now, and uh, I think it's good to have choices. If you're able to actively day trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time in the day trades is a good place for you to be in the room. If you are not able to do that, then the options is another choice and idea for you. You take the options trades, they get emailed to you. Again, you manage them yourself with your risk and exits, but you don't have to be sitting at their desk all day 24 seven to watch them, okay? Which is a nice thing. But if you can't be in the trading room, if you have a job or something where you can't, actively trade and you can just do the options and that's another idea. But if you wanna learn the system, then you have to do the class. And I think it's beneficial for people to do the class whether you're day trading or options. I have people in the letter that have not done the class that are successful. Some have done the letter and then did the class and traded after that in the room. You must do the class to join the room, but I do call the trades live exits, entries, stops, all of that in the room, so that's a benefit. And plus, I talk about the market in the room every day, and that is a huge benefit. And if you're in the options trades, it's a big benefit because it's interesting and pertinent, I believe, to know where the market's gonna go if you're in overnight positions. Because I, I, I guarantee you, if the market ends up really gapping down tomorrow, different from where we're seeing right now, lower, lower than this, or even here, if we open here, uh, then there are gonna be quite a few things that are gonna be gapping down tomorrow as well. And some of these stocks have had a nice ride. Back, let me just look at Microsoft really quickly here. Microsoft just kept going and it just seemed like there was no entry in here that made any sense and didn't seem like it would keep going and then Microsoft did just keep going. Let's see. 
Yeah, that fell yesterday. Yeah. All right, very good, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for staying. Come to the open house if you're interested. If you're interested in the class, email me at melissathestockswoosh.com. If you want to sign up for the options letter, email me. I really think it's a great letter. I mean, honestly, if you're thinking about dipping your toes into, the, into getting involved with me, the letter is a great idea. And I'm doing $2,500 special for July 4th for the options letter. It's $2,500 and you get the letter through September 30th, 2018. The letter is normally five grand for the whole year. So you pay $2,500 for a period of time, but it's three months almost. And it's a good period of time. Actually, three, it's more than three months if you sign up now. And you get the letter till the end of September. It's a good way to dip your toes into the water of doing the options. But the July class is the 13th and 14th for the Golden Gap course. Leo, you're another one. You've been following me since 2012. Honestly, I don't know if any of you are ever going to do the class, but you're, you've missed out on so, so many good trades. We'll see what the market does tomorrow. Very good. Have a great night. And thanks so much to Kathy and giving Kathy a round of applause for staying and talking about markets when she didn't know what she was talking about. And I kept calling her and telling her that I was in traffic. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. I'm like, I'm five blocks away. I'm two blocks away. I'm one block away. I'm five steps away. I'm in the elevator. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. All right. Have a good night, everyone. And we'll have a great day tomorrow. Very good. Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the open house. The same link will connect you, or you can email Melissa for access. But I'll also be around to help around 8 o'clock. No earlier than 8. She opens the room usually around 8.30. She starts talking and putting her screens up at 9.30, but she does post very important trade alerts to the room in text. Your hot comms not broken. There just won't be any sound or screen until 9.30. Okay, you all have a great night ahead. Good day trading tomorrow. Take care now.